Good morning. Uh, we can do way better than that. Good morning. Are you ready to praise the Lord today? Are you ready to worship him? Because today is Christ the King Sunday, and we are in his house to worship him. I'm so very thankful for each one of you that are, that are here. And, and uh, today on this very special day, you see uh, the, the back corner has uh, a, a few more people in it. And you guys, you guys have to learn how to move forward more. I mean, look at these. These are, the, these are the good seats. These are the VIP sections here. But back there, way back there, the Fikerts are all here, here today. Uh, for Darlene had a birthday on Wednesday, and uh, they're all here to celebrate and to uh, show Darlene how much they love her. So maybe, and I know we don't usually do this, but maybe today we could sing happy birthday. Yeah. What do you think? So why don't we sing happy birthday to Darlene, okay? We won't make her stand up. You'll stay right where you're at. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Darlene. May God bless you. Very good. <laughs> I hope you have a fun day with your family. All but two families are here because there's some sick people, but you know what? Praise the Lord. Uh, hopefully there's not a birthday that we're missing, but, you know, welcome to everybody. Uh, uh, this is going to be, you know, this week is kind of the calm before the storm, all right? Because this week we have a couple things going on. Uh, you see that, you know, the, the, we, we will be in the office Monday and Tuesday and a little bit on Wednesday, but then from that on, that time on, it's, it's uh, the office will be closed Thanksgiving Day and the day after. Um, and the next week, though, is is uh, is the 28th, and what that it's a very special uh, day because that day is actually the in in the Christian church in the in, on the Christian calendar it's New Year's. Okay, it's also the first day of Advent. All right, uh, being on that that day, the 28th, we will be doing some fun things. Of course, we're going to have. Uh, there will be no Sunday school next week, even though it says in the bulletin there is. There is no Sunday school next next week, but we will have coffee and donuts at 10, worship service at 10:30, and then please, 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 please stay after and help us decorate the church, okay? Uh, we're going to get it all done that one, one day there. Um, please let either myself or Darlene, know, or not, not Darlene, Sharon Feikert know if, if you're coming. There's also going to be a sign-up on Facebook, so uh, please stay. So we, we need to know if you're coming so we can have enough pizza for everybody, all right? Then, then, then it all starts. We have on, on the first, we have Bible study in the morning. We have a junior choir practice in the afternoon, uh, uh, Advent service that night, and then worship choir right after that uh, then you see the rest of it as you go on through the rest of the uh, bull bulletin there but uh, today as we're here we're going to take a look at, at uh, a passage in Revelation which is uh, uh, the, the, the grand and glorious Jesus and, uh, but we're, we're going to spend time today in prayer but also in, 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 in worshiping him in song uh, and then also hearing his word so let's, let's begin the service with a word of prayer Father God in heaven, I come before you this morning and I thank you and I praise you for this very special day that you've given us. Thank you for the, the, the day that we can be in your house to worship you. Thank you for all the, uh, the blessings that you showed us this week, for all the things that you are doing in each one of our lives. Lord, I thank you for those that are here this morning to enjoy this time as a, as a, a church family, but also, Lord, to spend time in your presence. I know it says in Scripture where two or three are gathered in your name, you're in the midst, and so you are here. And so, Lord, would you please just continue to bless this service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand with our op opening praise chorus, number 11, Give Thanks.
Let us turn to our Heavenly Father and confess our sin. Dear Heavenly Father, we bow before you to seek your forgiveness for our sins. We have sinned by our disobedience and omission, with pride and selfishness, and with disrespect and unrighteous living. For these we are truly sorry and seek your mercy and grace. Cleanse us according to your word in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It says in scripture that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But let's also confess what we believe with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The call to worship this morning is found in the 39th Psalm, where we see we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. O Lord, make known my end for what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a few hand breaths, and my lifetime is nothing before you. And now, O Lord, for what, I, what do I wait? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, so govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your glorious return, we may preserve in both faith and holiness of living. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Father God, I come before you again this morning, and I, I do thank you for this glorious day that you have made. I thank you for this time that we can be in your house to worship you. I thank you for how you have touched so many different lives this week that I've got, that I've been able to see, and, and I know that you're in, 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 even more, <laughs> you're doing way more than I can even see. But Lord, I know that you're touching people in a very special way. Lord, I do lift up and praise you for how you have been heal healing Wyatt. Just continue to be with him, and, and thank you for, for him being home, and just it's great to see what's going on in, in, in his life. Continue to be with the Lamb family and, and with Nevaeh as she continues to grow and get stronger. As you continue to heal Shirley and Brian Ochsner, Lord, I'm just asking that you would put your hand upon them. I know that Brian's getting much stronger, and so is Shirley. Be with Dolores, Lord. I had a great talk with her this week, and I know you were there. And Lord, I just I thank you for that lady. Be with her, her and her family as, as, uh, as they're in the last days of, of her time here on earth. Be with Kaylin Donauer as she, as she is uh, waiting now for uh, her, her transplant to be, to be taken care of. Touch her body, Lord, and, and be with the surgeons as they, as they, as they take care of her. Lord, I know that this week Mindy was having some issues, and so be with Mindy and Roger and, and, and let them both continue to heal and get stronger. Lord, I know there's many others that are going through things, uh, you know, people that come to my mind, and sometimes they want to be uh, prayed for out loud, but sometimes they just would like to just know that you are with them. And so, Lord, you know who they are, and you know what they need. Lord, be with our, our uh, medical personnel as they continue to take care of people that are, that, are, that are ill and not feeling well. Be with those that are infected and have been affected by COVID. Uh, Lord, uh, heal their bodies. Uh, take this, this, this away from them, Lord. Be with our EMS and fire department, our law enforcement. And Lord, I do lift up our country to you. I, I thank you, Lord, for the thing, some of the things that have happened this last week and the last month. And, and I just ask that you would continue to uh, point us in the right direction, continue to talk to our hearts and minds, talk to our leaders, talk to our uh, 
president and vice president. And uh, Lord, as we, as we lay them in, in, at your feet, I'm just asking that you would bring us back to where you want us to be, which is one nation under God. I love you, Lord. I thank you, and I praise you for this time we can be in your house. In your precious and holy name, Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Old Testament lesson is written in 2 Samuel chapter, chapter 23, verses 1 through 7. Now these are the last words of David. The oracle of David, the son of Jesse, the oracle of the man who was raised on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks by me. His word is on my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, when one rules justly over men, ruling in the fear of God, he dawns on them like the morning light, like the sun shining forth on a cloudless morning, like rain that makes grass to sprout from the earth. For does not my house stand so with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. For will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But worthless men are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be taken with the hand. But the man who touches them arms himself with iron and the shaft of a spear, and they are utterly consumed with fire. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament lesson is written in Revelation chapter 1, verses 4b through 8. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faith faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of kings on earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, Priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please, stand Please stand for the gospel lesson from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verse 33 through 37. The Gospel of John, chapter 18, verse 33 through 37, reading in Jesus' name. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus to him and said, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and your chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my, servant would have got, my servants would have been fighting, but I might not be, that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this world. Then Pilate said, said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Be you may be seated if the, if the young people want to come forward. Good morning, sir. How are you? Look at all these cats coming down the road here. Hi. Have a seat. How are you? Everybody looks great today. Are you here for a party? It's a great party today, isn't it? 
wow, this is really cool. Did you ever, did y'all have a good week? Did you learn a lot this week? Okay. Well, today is Christ the King Sunday. And what, what does a king usually wear on his head? What do you think? What? A crown. Okay. Well, you know, and I wish I had a crown to pass around, but we do, I didn't have a crown to pass around. But a king or a queen wear a crown. Now, what's the difference between a king or a queen and, and, and a president? Do you know the difference? No? Should I tell you? A president is elected. A king or a queen are born into that role. All right? And so, um, have, have any of you seen The Lion King? Have you? Okay. Do you remember the, the, the little, the little tiny, the little tiny uh, tiger or, or, or little lion. lion? Remember what was his name was? What was it again? Simba. Simba was, guess what? He was born to be the king of the beasts, right? Do you remember the, remember the song that he sang? Do you remember? No. No? Well, the, 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 the title of the song is, I Just Can't Wait to Be King. That's a, and he would sing it, remember? He would sing it all the time. I can't wait to be king. Simba was anxious to become king because he, did, he wanted everyone to do what he wanted to do and to serve him. Okay? So we see that about Simba. Simba had kind of a poor idea of being a king. He was just there to, because I'm king and I can do whatever I want, right? A good king is more concerned about the caring for his people and, 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 and being, than being served. During the last, his last days on earth, Jesus, Jesus was arrested. Do you remember? Jesus was arrested and put on trial. When he, and then right, just, I just read that when, when Jesus, when, when, when he was asked if he was king, Jesus said, you are right for saying that I am king. In fact, for this reason, I was born. And for this, I came into this world. So Jesus was born a king. Even though he was born in a manger, low right? He was born to be king. Jesus was a king, but, but unlike Simba, he was only interested, where Simba was only interested in doing, doing things for him, Jesus was more interested in doing things for his father, Father God. He was born to be king. He came to earth to make a way for us all to live with him in heaven. Jesus just can't wait to be your king. Do you know that? the king of your heart, the king of your mind, the king of your whole, your whole body, all right? So, should we talk to our Heavenly Father who is the king? Let's do it, okay, let's talk to him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son to be our Lord and king. Help us today and every day to honor him, obey him, and follow him with our, all, our whole life. In Jesus' name we say, amen. So, while you get a treat, we will sing as a congregation hymn number 146. You bet.
good. Just to remind you that the nursery is open today. If you need to take your children in there, we have a couple of young ladies in there to take care of them. So please, if you need to, by all means, but if you need, it would be great to have you stay right in service. But let's, uh, let's just bow for another word of prayer before we begin. Father God in heaven, thank you for your word, for we know your word is true and inerrant and inspired. And as we are in your house today, Lord, I'm just asking that you would continue to open our hearts and minds to to your truths, but also, Lord, to uh, direct us in a way that, uh, that, that is, you're, being, you're leading us through your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, as we uh, look at this passage of Scripture, I'm asking for you to bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts as we, uh, as we are in your presence. I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, as we take a look this morning at uh, Revelation chapter 1, verses uh, 4, back half of chapter 4 through verse 8, I want us to, uh, and I'm going to read it again for us in just a second, but I want us to remember that today is a day where we celebrate Jesus. Uh, not that we don't celebrate him every other Sunday that we're here, uh, but today we, we look at Jesus as, you know, he is the King of Kings, he is the Lord of Lords, he is the Prince of Peace, he's the Mighty Counselor. Uh, I remember back, in, back when we were uh, in, in Newark, Illinois, uh, the, the banners that, that, we, that we had back had all the different names throughout Scripture. Uh, that, G that Jesus was called. And it was absolutely beautiful. It was black with red, red, uh, red and yellow letters. And it was, it was just beautiful. But you'd go through it and you're like, oh, wow. But, it, but everything on that, that, on that banner pointed to Jesus Christ. And today as we look at this passage of Scripture, I wanted us to look at all the things that points us to Jesus Christ. As we see here in verse 4, he's, he's from the Father, in, and also from the, the sevenfold Spirit, and also from the Son, verse 5. So let's, let's just read through it again one more time. This is a Re Revelation chapter 1, verses the, the, the last half of uh, verse 4 through 8, where we, where we see, okay, where we see, from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness of the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the king of the earth, to him who loves us and released us from our sin by his blood. And he has made us to be a kingdom, priests to his, to, to his God and Father, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming in the clouds, and every eye will see him. Even those who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Well, here we're seeing, of course, we see the Trinity. We see the Father, the one, the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come. We also see the Holy Spirit, the sevenfold spirit of the number seven is used throughout Revelation to symbolize the completion and uh, perfection. But the main theme, the main theme of this message is that Jesus Christ is grand and glorious. Jesus Christ is grand and glorious. So let's take a look. Who is Jesus Christ? If someone was to ask you, who is Jesus Christ? What would you say? That's, you don't need to answer, but in your mind, think about that. Who is Jesus Christ? Well, here we see in verse, at the end of verse 5, he's God's faithful witness. And a little bit further, we see that he's the firstborn of the dead. A little bit furthermore, we see he's the ruler, the king of this earth. At the, end, at the end, he's the Alpha and the Omega, and he's the Eternal One. Others uh, uh, had, had, had risen from the dead, uh, people whom the prophets and Jesus and the apostles brought back to life during their ministry, but, but later those people, guess what? They died again. Jesus was the first who rose from the dead in an imperishable body never to die again. He is the first to rise from the dead. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 says this, But the fact is, Christ has been risen from the dead and the first fruits of those who are asleep. 
Church, just as, just as, as, as the first part of the harvest, we, all, we, we just finished with harvest here, and it, th- that was brought into the temple and, and, and as an offering to Leviticus chapter, in Leviticus chapter 23. So Jesus Christ was the first to rise from the dead and to never die again. He is our forerunner. He is he, the, the guarantee of the eventual resurrection to eternal life. He was the Alpha and the Omega. The first, and that is the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. And, and, and the, the, the Lord Jesus, the Lord God himself, is the beginning and the end. God the Father, who is the beginning and the end of existence, wisdom, and power. So again, I ask you, if someone was to ask you, who is this Jesus? Tell me about what you believe in Jesus. Tell me why you believe this Jesus. What, who is he? Have you met him? Well, I hope you say I have met him. I've met him right here in my heart. Because our Jesus is the grand and glorious Jesus. The one and only, the Alpha and the Omega. I love that. To, to, to see him, that is, that, to me, that, that, that tells me that he is everything. He was there at the beginning. He's there. He's going to be there at the end. And he's there everywhere through. He is the eternal one. He is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The grand and glorious Jesus Christ. So, then we step to the next thing. So we, we saw who Jesus is. The second thing is what Jesus has done. So if we, we see it in verse 5 and 6, we see that he shed his blood to redeem us and he made us a kingdom of priests. Well, what does that mean? Well, I'll tell you this. Many, many of us hesitate to witness about our faith in Jesus Christ. Why? Because I don't feel that maybe, maybe you, you're, you're, you're too nervous, but... Maybe you haven't really felt the change. The change in their life has been spectacular enough. But that you qualify as a witness for Jesus because of what he's done for you. Not because of what have you done for him. We talked about that this, this, this morning during Sunday school about, about good, good, good works. There's nothing, there's nothing we can do to save ourselves. Jesus does that. Jesus demonstrated his, his, his great love by setting us free from our sins through his death on the cross, guaranteeing us a place in his kingdom and making us ministers, priests if you want to call it, to administer God's love to others. It's simply sharing your faith. What our, what our grand and glorious Jesus has done in your life. The fact that the all-powerful God has, eternal, has offered eternal life to you is nothing more than, guess what? Spectacular. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says this. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. It doesn't say anything about what you have done. It says everything about what he has done. Jesus here is portrayed as the all-powerful king, victorious in battle, glorious in peace. He's not just, just, a, just a humble earthly teacher. He is the glorious God. When you read through John's description of this vision, keep in mind that his words are not just good advice. They are the truth about the King of Kings. They are the truth about the King of Kings. Don't just read his words from their, from their interesting and amazing portrayal of, fu- of, of the future, but, but let, the, let the truth about Jesus, let the truth about Jesus penetrate your life deep in your faith with him and strengthen your commitment to follow him no matter what the cost. So my, my, again, we go back to, we, we, just, we talked about who is Jesus, but what has Jesus done? I mean, we could sit here, in, uh, this, this last Wednesday, we had, we had, a, uh, um, we had a community uh, Thanksgiving service here, which we had a great turnout. There was 100, just over 100, 100 people here. Pies were great, so whoever made the strawberry rhubarb, thumbs up. 
But what, we, what I saw there, what Jesus was doing in people's lives, because we had uh, all the switch kids were sitting right here, and there was, a, there was a mess of them. I mean, there was a lot. And we had a thing called family of God time that was right through the middle of the service. And what it was was we could share what's, what God is doing in our life. Thanksgiving, praises, and prayer requests, okay? So I opened it up. You know, and I saw, I saw a lot of people, like if I took the, if I had a, a microphone right now and I started to walk around this room, everybody would look at their shoes. I'm pretty positive. Don't come here, don't come here, don't come here. But it was fun to watch and to listen. And if, and if you got to watch it on, online or if you were here, I'm sure, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty positive you were blessed. But to hear the testimonies of what God is doing and the prayer requests I mean, I didn't mean that when I said prayer request that they would share it and we would all pray, pray, pray together. Oh, no. When, we, when they shared something, they prayed right then and there for that, that person. I, it, I was like, cool. That's awesome. Okay? So what has Jesus done for you? What has he done for you? Think about it. On this Thanksgiving week, weekend, this whole week that's going to be pretty much ce celebrated of Thanksgiving, what has he done to bless you? What has he done to teach you? Sometimes a teaching is, is, is a conflict, right? It's something that, that, that kind of hurts. Sometimes it's, a, it's something that we don't want to walk through anymore. And here we see that, 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 that John, who has this, this, this description and how, Jesus, how God is talking straight to him, inspiring him with these words. And at the very beginning of Revelation, he's talking about who he is, what he's done, and what he's going to do. What is that? What, what he is, what he's done, and what he continues to do. It's gospel. Law is what we must do, right? Gospel is what he has done and continues to do. So as we, as we see, what has, what has Jesus done in your life? Has he healed you? Has he blessed you with, as I, as I see the Fikerts way back there, obviously he's blessed them continually with, 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 with a, a large family. But each one of us, we've been touched in a very special way, one way or another. Think about the things that you're going through right now. How is God working in your life? But as we see this grand and glorious Jesus, and we saw who he is, and we've seen now, now what Jesus has done, and now let's look at the last part, which we see at the very end here, what Jesus will do. Here's the thing. We said this last week, and we're going to say it again. He will come again in the clouds, revealing himself not just to one, one set of people, but he's going to reveal himself to the Jews and the Gentiles. That is everyone. John here is announcing the return of Jesus to earth. Jesus' second coming will be visible and be victorious. And all people will see him arrive and they will know it is Jesus. They will know without a shadow of a doubt. And when he comes, he will, he will conquer the evil and judge all people according to their deeds. Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. We're going to read through that. And it's, you know, we're jumping back to the back of, the, of, of, the, of this book, but I really want you to hear what, what, what John sees, what, what God has given as a vision to John 11 through 15. Then I saw a great white throne in him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away. And no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened, and other books were opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged for, from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up all the dead which were in them, and they were judged everyone according to their deeds. The death and Hades were thrown into the fire. The death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name is not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Did you hear that? I didn't make it up. It's written right there. Revelation chapter 20, 11 through 15. At the judgment, 
the books will be opened. The book of life containing the name of those who have put their trust in Jesus Christ to save them. These books also contain the record of deeds that everybody has done, good or evil. Everyone's life will be reviewed and evaluated. No one is saved by deeds. Did you hear that? I'm going to say it again. No one is saved by deeds. But deeds are seen as clear evidence of the person's actual relationship with God. We talked about that this morning, and we've talked about that a few other times. Deeds are being led by the Holy Spirit. Deeds are the things that happen when we have Jesus in our heart. He drives us to do those things. It shows our actual relationship with our Heavenly Father. Jesus will look at how we have handled the gifts, the opportunities, and the responsibilities that he has given us. God's gracious gift of salvation does not free us from the requirements of faithful obedience and service. Each of us must serve Jesus Christ in the best way we know how and live our life every day knowing that the books will be open one day. John chapter 14, verse 6 says this, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I'm going to tell you, church, hell is real. Judgment day is coming, and there will be judgment on each one of us. I would never want to be a pastor that did not talk about hell. Because I don't want any of us to be there. Not one of us. But the one thing I do know is if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Prince of peace, the mighty counselor, the Lion of Judah, we can go on and on, right? If we do that, if we put our, our faith in him, we will not be there. We'll be with him forever. We'll be with, be with the King of kings forever. We'll be praising him forever. We will not be separated from him. We'll be in his presence. Do you want that? Do you want that? This would be where you could say yes or nod your head. Do you want this? Yes, Pastor, we do want this. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. The, this, 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 this whole, these first four, four the, those four verses that we went through, that we're, we're, we're seeing that, that John is showing us exactly what God has shown him. He reviews the wonder of the Godhead, naming the person of the Trinity. He names the Father, him which is, which was, and which is to come, verse 4. That is the eternal God. God stands above history. And he's not limited to time. But then he goes in and talks about the Spirit. Seven is the number of completion and stands for the fullness of the Spirit in, verse, uh, in, in chapter 4, verse 5. We see that the sevenfold Spirit is a, is, is, is a symbol of the seven lamps. And in 5, verse 6, seven eyes. Jesus Christ has the sevenfold Spirit. The Spirit points to Jesus Christ, who is the last thing, the Son, Jesus Christ is presented in his threefold person as prophet, faithful witness, a priest, first begotten of the dead, that is the highest of, of those raised from the dead, and king, he's the prince of the kings of the earth. Then John praises God for the threefold works that Jesus accomplished on the cross. What are they? Well, first, he loved us. He washed us or freed us from our sin and made us a kingdom of ministers, priests. The, domin the dominion we, lo we lost in Adam, we have regained in Jesus Christ. So you're sitting there going, okay, thanks for all that. What does it mean? What does it mean to me? Well, what it means is that I'm showing you today, and hopefully you're seeing it, but we're seeing Jesus Christ. We're seeing the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Prince of priests. Jesus is the King of kings. Jesus did die on the cross and rose again on the third day to pay the price for our sins and to make us right with God, make us righteous. Jesus will come again, and his second coming will be awesome. Awesome. I know that we, 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 we can all, when you think of things, when you think of things that, 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 that you feel are awesome, you know, I, I thought like 
some of the things that I'm trying to figure out the easiest way to say, but I remember when both our children were born because I was there even though I didn't know what I was getting into. But when they were born, it was awesome. I remember Kelly, with, when Dylan, our firstborn, when he was born, I sat there and bawled because she's been in labor for over 20 hours, and they said, if you don't do it, we're going to have to take it soon. And she went from zero to 100 right now. It was awesome. She even ripped my shirt because she was yelling at me so much. But to watch that happen, that was awesome. Can you, okay, so, and, and some of you have seen that. But this is going to be even better. This is going to be something that when Jesus comes back, it's going to be the greatest thing you ever saw. You're going to see him coming, and you're going to be in his presence. To me, that's going to be awesome. Do you have that, 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 that hope? Are you, are you excited for that? Are you ready to have Jesus Christ? Is he the ruler of your life? Is he number one? Is he, do you know who he is, and do you know what he has done and what he continues to do? Do you know that he's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty Counselor, the Lion of Judah? Like I said, we can go on and on with all the different things. And when we come to see him face to face one day, the with words that I want to hear, that I, I'm going to hear, is welcome home, my faithful servant. Is that what you're going to hear? Because if not, I'm gonna, we're going to pray another, another quick prayer. And if you do not have Jesus in your heart, if you do not know where, exactly where he is and you're living for him, and he is your king, he is your Lord, he is your savior, you can do something really quick. And just by closing your eyes and bowing your heads and turning to the, just turning to the cross and saying to, 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 our, to our Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I confess that I have sinned against you and I need your salvation. Please forgive all my wrongdoings and let me live in a relationship with you from now on. I do receive Jesus, the King, as my personal Savior, putting my full trust in the work that he did on the cross. Thank you for saving and accepting me right where I'm at. Continue to love me and help me to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you. We love you. We praise you. We worship you. And as we are in this place right now, Lord, I'm just asking that you would continue to open our hearts and our minds to the truth that you have in Scripture. Continue to feed us spiritually. Continue to have your Holy Spirit fill us, to guide us and lead us, to remind us, to convict us, but also, Lord, to continue to love us Thank you for sending Jesus here. Thank you for coming to this earth. Lord, continue to focus us on the things that you want and put us in the direction and the place that you want us to be. Thank you for loving us. In your name I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we, uh, as we close our service, why don't we go ahead and stand and sing our, our next hymn, 151.
Please join me in turning to our Lord and praying the prayer he taught, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us the trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction from Ephesians chapter 3. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.